Okay, we're good. We're live. Good. Welcome, everybody. We're going to give you an update uh, real quick on what's happening right now in Israel related to Hezbollah and the uh, killing of Nasrallah and just all of the things that are going on. Joined by my son, Brent Evans, also Dr. Mark Hitchcock and Brian Schrager. And we're going to be talking about this. And so, Brian, you're on the ground there in Israel. Uh, what time is it where you are right now? It's 7.13 in the evening. Shabbat just went out about 10 minutes ago. So what's the, what's the spirit and attitude right now in Israel? A lot of celebration. Um, I'm in a home that, that is observant, and so they've had their electronics turned off today, but still the word got out that Nasrallah had been killed. One thing that was interesting in this home where they don't have electronics turned on during, the, during Shabbat Last night during the Shabbat meal, my friend's phone began to ring, and, and why? And for the first time ever, he was getting a notice from Homefront Command to stay near a shelter. Now, that's because they placed him in Katsrin. Uh, he's often, he and his wife are often up in Katsrin. Anyway, we all wondered why. Why was this happening? That's never happened before. Well, this morning we found out why. Uh, Israel had just bombed the headquarters for Hezbollah in Beirut, and they were fully anticipating a big response. That big response came, but it came today. So it's been, it's been a, just really, really dramatic uh, time here today. Well, so Iran is rattling the sword now. Netanyahu gave a speech yesterday at the United Nations saying, if you strike us, we're going to strike you. Is there any sense that there is a pending strike coming from Iran? Not right now. I mean, uh, uh, Ali Khamenei, the so-called Supreme Leader of Iran, issued a statement never really talking directly about the assassination of Nasrallah, but he did say that everything is just going, there's going to be retribution, basically. But at the same time, and I find this rather funny, he went into hiding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Everything's fine. I'll, I'll see you later. We're going, to, we're going to get you by for now. I'm going, to, I'm going to go underground, you know, and not that underground is going to help him too much. Uh, I, psychologically, it's been very interesting to see what's happened as a result of the, the pagers exploding uh, last week, I think it was, and then the, the walkie-talkies. And now this, in, in Iran, they also issued a, 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 whatever, an order not to use pagers or cell phones or walkie-talkies. So wow. across the, the Islamist world, this has had a really big psychological impact. Mark, what do you think about it? how big is the killing of Nasrallah? Well, yeah, you know, I don't think it's an overstatement really to say this may be the most consequential event since October 7th, at least as far yeah. as people's enemies go. Yeah. This, this is a, a watershed moment. You know, these, these were uh, 5,000 pound bunker busters, you know, that were dropped there. From what I've read, it shook all of Beirut. I mean, the, the whole yeah. area was rocked by this. And, you know, it's, it's just as Ryan just mentioned, you know, Khamenei has been moved to a secure location. Sinwar, the head of God, the head of Hamas, now has been relocated in Gaza. They're, they're all basically on the run. But it's also been interesting to me the, the response of the rest of the uh, Islamic world. Turkey, of course, Erdogan, in his speech at the UN General Assembly, said that he compared Netanyahu to Hitler. Yeah. So, this took place, he said, the Muslim world needs to show a more determined stance. So he's been trying to, to get the Muslim world united against Israel. He warned Israel that now they're in uncharted waters. And he's uh, urged the United Nations and others that a, a, a combined uh, action is needed um, against Israel. One other thing that, that has not been mentioned that I've read too much about is an Iranian brigadier general was also killed in this attack at, at Hezbollah uh, command. Yeah. There's uh, one of the brigadier generals of the Iranian Revolution Guard Corps. So it shows you how enmeshed they are together that this leader was there. Uh, this has really set all of these leaders scurrying, you know, because just a few days ago they killed another, you know, high ranking Hezbollah right. official. So basically, if you look at the hierarchy of Hezbollah, I don't know that anyone in the top, you know, hierarchy of the top 10 has even left. Uh, there, there could be one, one or two, but they've basically all been taken out. I think that the big issue to me now, though, is what will Iran do? And, you know, Iran may respond in some way, but I'm not sure Iran has much of an appetite right now to get involved in this. That's just my take right now. I could be wrong about that. But I think they'll, again, probably do something to Israel against through their uh, surrogates. 
right. you know, Yemen fired a, just fired a missile into Israel. It was intercepted. The Houthis down there. So, yeah, they're all going to be involved in this. But but it's a it's a consequential event that I think that the, it's going to reverberate really for, for some period of time. The consequence. If I may, there is some news. And, and Mark, you mentioned some of it all day today. Hezbollah has been peppering Israel with rockets. And a couple of hours ago, as Mark mentioned, Yemen actually had a missile that was going over toward the central area of Israel, the Tel Aviv area, basically. And it was intercepted. But even in Jerusalem, we could hear the booms. Hmm. We, we, heard, wow. we heard the interceptions. So the, the, the word and a couple other items, the word out earlier today was that I think it's Nasrallah's cousin had taken his place and that he is even more radical than Nasrallah. At the same time, maybe 20 minutes ago, a report came out from Lebanese press that Israel has carried out another strike in the same neighborhood of Beirut. And this has just happened in probably the last 30 minutes. And according to Lebanese press, they felt it was another assassination attempt. So perhaps they're going after the heir apparent of Nasrallah. We don't know. We won't know for a little while. So, so Brian, it seems as though that the intelligence, Israeli intelligence, yeah. really everywhere, but it seems like they're they're they know they know when they go to the bathroom over there. They they really do. I mean, it, it's actually spectacular what they know. They must have someone inside. Yeah, that's all I can figure, or even several people inside that are giving them. I mean, incredibly timely, accurate intelligence. Yeah, they know when they're meeting. They knew and Nasrallah's been hiding out for what thirty years. He's been oh, we yeah. in here. My, my friends in Israel, we called him Bunker Boy. <laughs> he, he's not, you know, he's not seen the sunlight in, in twenty years or more. Right. Well, today that bunker did not protect him, or last night it did right. not protect him. Um. So yeah. Brent, anything you want to tell us? Amazing. Yeah, I mean, this is a big week coming up with Rosh Hashanah. I was going to say, you know, we've had some issues over here in the United States with uh, the hurricane, with some flooding. You know, it just seems like there's a lot of activity around the world with natural disasters and also now with this Middle East unrest. So just coming into the feast next week, any any words of wisdom for those out there that are trying to figure out what's happening in the world right now? Well, you know, I think one thing that I look at right now is that this, in this interim right now, kind of with our elections, you know, with President Biden right now, seeing this, a little bit of a lame duck, you wonder, though, if Iran is going to act, if they won't try to do something in this interim period, you know, all the elections are kind of going on. So, you know, I look at that. I mean, I, I don't think Iran has as much appetite maybe to do this directly, but again, through all their surrogates. But if they are going to act, they might see this kind of time right now as kind of an unstable time in the United States, a time when we're not as maybe as prepared to, to respond as a time to act. So I think we have to factor that into all of this as well. You know, it, it seems as though, Mark, you did a show a couple of weeks ago on Gog and Magog, you know, the, the level of relationship between Turkey and Russia and Iran which has coalesced in a major way in the last few years. And so one of the things that I wonder about is if Israel bombed Iran, uh, either preemptively or in response to a strike from Iran, Netanyahu said yesterday in the United Nations, if you strike us, we're going to strike you back. And the long arm of Israel can reach anywhere in Iran, which you know is right. But if, if Israel bombed Iran, First of all, if they bombed Iran, it would be a significant bombing. It, it would not be like with Hezbollah, just a volley of rockets. They're not going to play games. Do you believe that that could provoke a more of a regional war, Mark? Sure. Yeah, I believe it could. I think Turkey would, you know, Erdogan seems to just be kind of chomping at the bit to do something. Right. Right. He's been he's been ramping up his rhetoric all along. It certainly could bring them in. Of course, Syria, you know, they've been embroiled in this civil war, but still, um, you know, Iran is there. Russia's there to a smaller degree now. Now, you know, they could try to get involved with with, uh, with Assad, you know, whatever help they could offer. Um, obviously, you have the Houthis. You've got all this, you know, whole axis of resistance, all these proxies of Iran. But this is a massive blow to Iran because this is their this is their crown jewel proxy. Hezbollah, right. they're powerful right. by far. In fact, they have the most powerful of any of any group that's not a nation state, they have the most powerful weaponry and army in the world, Hezbollah does. So yeah. this is a massive blow to Iran, to their network, 
but also I think as Brian mentioned, just their psychology, I think as well. And so I think us, you know, or Israel hitting uh, Iran directly, would could cause them to have to respond back, you know, before Iran kind of made a pretty good hit into Israel, Israel just kind of gave a pinprick back. Israel seems to be motivated right now to take pretty dramatic steps. Right. But this, well, they're on a war footing right now. They seem to just want to want to go all out and do whatever they've got to do and finish the job at this time. Yeah, that, that part of the message, that, that's a big message right now going out here. Israel is ready to do whatever it takes. Mm -hmm. it, no more tit for tat. Yeah. No, more, no more playing around. They're ready to go all out. There's been talk here, at least in my circles today, of perhaps we should take out the imams in Iran, not necessarily targeting the nuclear program, but the leaders there, like we did with Hezbollah. And I, I'm up in three minutes. I've got to go. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going to leave, guys, but y'all keep going. All right. Thank you, Jimmy. Good to see you, Jimmy. Go, guys. Brian, you're... Well, so anyway, if we, if we did get, knock out the imams in Iran, there is a chance the government could crumble there, and, and that would be a good thing because the uh, a vast majority, perhaps most people in Iran, don't support the government. They're a very oppressed people. Israel does not regard Iranians as the enemy, but the Iranian government. So as far as Erdogan is concerned, his rhetoric has been absolutely atrocious. He, he seems to be making a bid to you know bring back the Ottoman Empire, but he doesn't. You know, he's also a member of NATO. I, I can't see him actually attacking Israel at least in the near term. The big threat for attacking Israel is from Iran, as we saw back on, what, April 13, I think it was, yeah. when 300 missiles or so came in and uh, exploded over the skies here, and none of them hit. Uh, I, I also think it's just really, really, really wonderful how God has provided a way for Israel to move ahead on this. I think every step of the way from assassinating the number two guy in, in, in Hezbollah back in what, end of July, and then going forward, all of the events that have happened, Israel, it's been a very, very risky thing. Israel's taking a lot of risk here. And, and uh, there's been careful planning. And I think because of the prayers of those who love Israel and support Israel, God has, has blessed those efforts and he has, he's given them success. We're not through it yet, but this is a very, very big day. Uh, next up is what will Iran do? Yeah, it always seems like over there with Israel, you know, what's been going on since October 7th, the question is always what's next. <laughs> yeah. And, and you know, those kind of things t t seem to kind of escalate. It's what's next. And I think we're at a major what's next uh, moment here right now. And I think, you know, Brent brought up earlier with Rosh Hashanah uh, coming up, a, a lot of other events happening right now. It's just, you know, there's a there's a convergence of lots of things happening. You know, Russia, they're the other key nation in this Gog Magog coalition. They're, you know, they've got their hands full right now over there. Yeah, they do. They keep getting more and more weaponry, though, from Iran. They're they're very dependent on Iran. You know, I didn't realize it this week. I just heard someone say that that Russia's economy is like the state of Texas. I didn't realize that. You know, they're they're not an economic powerhouse, so they need these other nations and. That's what's going to ultimately, I think, draw them into the Gog Magog War is they're going to need these other nations, and uh, they'll they'll provide a lot of the weaponry and a lot of those things. But um, anyway, what's going to happen? What's going to happen next? None of us know, but it's going to be it's going to be something big. I think that's going to happen one way or another. It seems like there's an absence of leadership too. You know, you think about the world stage and who are the major players? I mean, America doesn't have a major player right now in the, in the world in terms of leadership. China seems to have more of the oxygen in the room and some of those kinds of nations, but it seems to me like there's a perfect opportunity for a, a world leader to also kind of emerge during this time frame. Mm -hmm. Yeah, could be. I can, uh, this is not on that point, but going back to Rosh Hashanah, which begins here on Wednesday evening, um, there is a sense of a, a much there's a much needed sense of a psychological boost here, a spiritual boost too, because part of the prayers of Rosh Hashanah going into Yom Kippur are our prayers, of course, repentance, and then you know who's going to be written in the Book of Life and who will die this year and who won't. And of course, that happened last year. Right after that happened, October seven or a few about a week later, it happened. Uh, October seven happened, and it 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 created a crisis of faith with a lot of people here. Um, and 
the big debate has been as we approach October 7, how do we honor that? We're not out of it yet. The, the hostages are not all back. Some of them are still being held in dungeons, and that is a hugely, hugely emotional, visceral issue for all the Israelis here. Um, and so what's happened today and, and the last few weeks, but leading up to the assassination of Nasrallah, is at least a boost and, and a good one. I, for the first time in a long time, Israelis here are smiling. Uh, there's a sense of this is, you know, we, we've done something good. And we've gone from a sense of the state abandoned us a year ago. It wasn't there. The state just completely disappeared. It dropped the ball entirely. Now we're seeing Israel as, as it has been in the past in these incredible missions that it's, it's been doing and now it's military efforts. So anyway, I would encourage anyone watching, everyone watching, please pray for Israelis right now. There is an opportunity for them to hear the voice of God and, and, um, and, and they're open to hearing it. You know, kind of circling back, Brent, on one thing, too. I, I've not confirmed this from a lot of different places, but my understanding is with Nasrallah's assassination, with killing him, they, they tricked him because Netanyahu came to the United States in New York City, and he believed that they wouldn't do anything while Netanyahu was out of the country. Right. My understanding is, now Brian, you can speak into this. Maybe this is not accurate, but that they believed Nasrallah was hit and struck while he was listening. He, he was listening. Oh, wow. Well, it was, yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know the exact timeline. The press here is making it very clear that Netanyahu authorized the strike mm -hmm. just before he went on the podium. Okay. And there are, yeah. photos, there are photos of him doing that. Now, how long it took from that mm -hmm. order, that okay being given until uh, it could be at the same time, I, I don't know. But that, you know, I, and that, yeah, it's not, that's not a huge major point, but there's a... Right kind of a poetic justice to that. Yeah, very much so, yeah, very dramatic, yeah. I'm kind of free to be in this command center a little more open than I would be, and he's listening to this, you know, you yeah. in it, where, you know, which I thought was just a, a, a powerful speech that Netanyahu gave, sitting there yeah. listening to that powerful speech, and, you know, if that happened, or even just, you know, a few minutes after that, there's a, a powerful sense of, of poetic justice, of divine justice, uh, really, to that. Oh, I, I don't have it on screen right now, too, but there's another interesting correlation between this week's Parsha, which is the Torah portion. All, all Jews go through the, through the Torah, uh, certain portions every week. And the Torah portion this week includes a passage that, in essence, I don't have it in front of me. I have a screenshot of it on my phone, but I can't get to it right now. It says something to the fact that um, the Lord, Hashem, is going to defeat Israel's enemies when they rise up against them. And it was in the Porsche today. Mm -hmm. uh, and so everyone going to synagogue, to shul today, they heard that in the reading of, of from God's word. And I think that's, that's, that's pretty cool. Well, guys, I know your Saturdays are busy and uh, I appreciate y'all jumping on with, uh, like my dad's speaking right, right now, I think in many, right. Minneapolis on stage at our marriage conference. So um, we'll, we'll keep everyone updated as, the news breaks, and I don't know if you'll have any other thoughts, but I think this was huge news. Wanted to get the, the team together to kind of give some analysis on it. Anything else before we close? No, Thank you, Brent. For doing it, Brent. We appreciate it. Thank you for the opportunity. Absolutely. All right. We'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you. Okay. God okay. bless, God bless everybody. Bye.